What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. It is a beautiful day in the garden today, but it actually is also kind of starting to snow a little bit. It's so weird. It's Michigan. We don't question it until like May. It can do whatever it wants until about May. So in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the differences between urban gardening and rural gardening. I think this is a topic that is gonna be, uh, I mean, you might learn something, but I think it's also gonna be interesting because a lot of you have asked me to cover this topic. And so I thought, heck, why not? Let's talk about it. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about the differences of urban gardening versus rural gardening. And we're also gonna talk about some of the benefits of both. Also, maybe some downsides to both because uh, there are benefits and downsides to both methods, like anything. And I think it's gonna be kind of fun. Now, obviously, if you live in the country, you can have some components of an urban garden. There's nothing saying you can't. But if you live in an uh, in, in urban environment, you may have some components of a, of a rural garden but there are some certain things that are kind of uh, afforded to people in rural areas that us city dwellers don't necessarily have. And that's not a bad thing. I just think it's kind of fun just to look at the fact that, you know, there's many different gardens all around the world, many different shapes, sizes, and forms, but they're all gardens. And I think it can be kind of uh, a unifying thing as well. So with that being said, let's jump on into today's video. I'm really excited to talk about this. So let's go. Now, rural gardens, I have a pretty extensive history with because my whole family grew up in a tiny little mid-Michigan town and they all had gardens, but it was in the middle of nowhere. So pretty much everyone had a garden because to drive to the nearest grocery store, you know, most people had to drive 15, 20 minutes to get to a grocery store. And a lot of their, uh, their you know, parents and grandparents also had gardens growing up. So it was kind of just a way of life for them. And, th and the one thing that I did notice with all of their gardens was the size of their garden. You see, in the city, the size of your garden is kind of restricted by the size of your lot. However, in the country, you have so many acres. I mean, you might have one acre at a minimum, five acres, kind of an average, um, and then upwards of 10 to 50 acres for some of your larger size lots. Now, obviously, that means you can have a much larger garden. Now, for some people, they might just consider that a farm or like a mini farm. But for all intents and purposes, I'm calling that a garden. And the definition of garden for me is just a plot of land that you're growing food for yourself or your family. Now, that's kind of what I would kind of consider to be a garden. Now, you might have a market garden, you might have you know, other things, but I'm not really gonna get into all those details. So basically, people have larger gardens in rural areas because they have more land afforded to them. You see, we're here on a third of an acre, and a third of an acre, you might have a, a pig pen that's a third of an acre. I mean, heck, they have so much land out there that they kind of, I mean, I don't wanna say they take it for granted, but they just use it like crazy. And that can also be a negative because sometimes the, the bigger the plot, the less efficient it is. And we talk about that all the time on this channel that bigger is not always better. I would much rather maintain a smaller plot and really hone in my skills, really get the quality of my vegetables up, uh, maintain the quality of the soil. I'd rather do that so that can definitely be a negative, but it's also not a bad thing as well because it can afford you the ability, if you can maintain the land, to grow a heck of a lot more food than you can on a tiny lot. So just some differences there. The next thing that's also kind of obvious are the farming implements or you know the, the equipment that's being used. See, on a city lot, we might use shovels, we might use a wheelbarrow, and you might use a wheelbarrow in a rural garden, but most of my relatives, they use big rototillers, they used tractors, they used front end loaders, they used huge farming implements that you know you just don't have space for here. You know, if you had it here, you might be uh, like a construction contractor if you had a front end loader. But out there, I mean, everyone pretty much has one. Um, so those are some things that you kind of see uh, on the regular in a rural garden. And that's because the bigger the plot, the bigger the equipment it takes to maintain that plot. Yes, you can do it with a small little handheld rototiller, and my grandpa did it for years, but his garden was maybe maybe about the size of our garden. So it was definitely on the smaller end of rural gardens, and he still used, I mean, he still had a tractor that he used from time to time, but for basic maintenance, he used a, he used just a, hand, uh, a walk behind handheld rototiller, and that was fine for him. But again, most of the time in urban gardens, you really don't have any of that equipment. It's just at the very least, uh, or at the very most, a small handheld rototiller, or you're growing in like raised beds or uh, small scale where a shovel can do most of the work that you need, a shovel and a rake. So those are kind of the, some differences with equipment. The next thing I wanna talk about is the differences with kind of garden style. So in an urban garden, you have 
raised beds. That's kind of your typical thing that you see. And that's because in an urban environment, and this is not by no means is this like exclusive to urban gardening. I've seen raised beds out in the country as well, but it's just that when you have a, um, an urban area, people like to keep aesthetics as their prime focus. And to me, I love aesthetics. I love how a garden looks, and it's definitely not a requirement to have a garden. I mean, heck, I've grown in ground, I've grown in raised beds, I've grown hydroponically, I've grown many, many different types of methods. I've grown in straw bales and whatnot. So I've used a lot of the different methods. It's just that the neatest and most orderly and organized method of gardening that I've come across is raised bed gardening. It keeps walkways very clean. It keeps the soil elevated. It, um, I mean, it offers you great benefits as well, which you know we can talk about as well. But uh, it offers you cleanliness, and I think in an urban environment, people like to see that. I've said all the time how you know the perception of a garden can really uh, reflect negatively or positively based on how well it's kept. Um, out in the country, the population density is so small that you might only have one or two people driving by your house in a given day, or maybe a couple handfuls of people driving by your house in a given day. And so who cares what your garden looks like? It doesn't really matter. And so you're afforded a little more freedom and, and kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess freedom is the, is the term I would use. You're afforded a little more freedom out in the country to do what you want and your garden doesn't have to look a certain way. And that's not to say that your garden shouldn't look pretty as well. But I've always said that in a city, people tend to keep their gardens a lot more tidy and clean. Things like HOAs, HOAs don't exist in the country, HOAs exist in the city. And so homeowners associations, um, you know, city codes, uh, things like that, typically uh, kind of have a small bearing on garden layout and what people want to do for their garden. So raised beds is typically something that you'll see in a city that you won't always find in the country. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, when you're talking about raised beds, raised beds are not always a bad thing. Uh, I mean, raised beds, yes, they're costly. They do cost a little more money, but the nice thing is that they, they give you a lot better soil quality. And one thing that I think is interesting to note is that I think if you compare and contrast rural gardens compared to urban gardens, a lot of people would see that the soil quality across the board you know, is probably a better quality soil. When you have raised beds, you have to fill them. And if you're gonna fill them, you're gonna fill them up with something good, hopefully. Hopefully, that's <laughs> not always true, but hopefully that's the case. And so in our case, we brought in compost. We brought in truckloads of compost and we literally filled our beds with 100% compost. If you have a really large garden in a rural area, you can use compost, but you might have such a big garden that bringing in all that compost, 12 inches deep of compost across, say, uh, you know, a quarter acre or a uh, half acre size plot, that might be completely cost prohibitive and you end up not having the highest quality soil, but you do have a larger garden in the long run. So there are benefits to both obviously, but you might have higher quality soil in the city because you're forced to have higher quality uh, because you have to bring it in rather than just use what you're, what you're given. The next thing I think is interesting to note, and this is just, you know, it's not a generalization, but I think across the board, you'd probably find this to be true, that in the city, gardening supplies are easier to come by. I know this to be true because anytime I go over to my, my family's uh, place, you have a couple farm supply stores, and most of those farm supply stores cater to big, you know, very large uh, kind of farms, not necessarily gardens. And so if you're looking for like a rake, if you're looking for a shovel, if you're looking for potting soil, if you're looking for, you know, small handheld tools and whatnot, you really don't find all those that much because there might only be one farm supply, uh, one farm supply store within a 15 mile radius. So just to drive down and get something incidental is, you know, might be a little bit of fertilizer. It might be, uh, you know, a packet of seeds. It might be, uh, um, a wheelbarrow, like I said, just any basic necessity. I do think that we're afforded that oddly in the city more than the country. I mean, if I wanted to get something where my, where my family lives, I'd have to drive about 15, 20 minutes to get to the nearest farm supply store. 15 to 20 minutes, that's insane. I can literally walk down the road and there's a hardware store that carries wheelbarrows, shovels, rakes, usually has a big stack of potting soil outside and I can go in well, I can go that direction about five more miles, 
And there's another one. It's a whole chain of them. They're all around. And there's big box stores, you know, Lowe's and Home Depot that are located in cities that, you know, are, are bigger big box store hardware stores that have soil, shovels, rakes, gloves, seeds, you know, little bits of fertilizer, whatnot, incidental stuff that you might not be able to get. And so I, I to be honest, I think to be a, a, uh, an urban gardener, if you have to run and get something really quick or you need something incidental, it's nicer to live in the city than it is to live in the country. Unless of course you don't mind driving 15 or 20 miles. It's just something different. It's not a bad thing. It's just something different. The next thing that I think would be kind of interesting to highlight are the fertilizer choices. Now, again, this is not a, this is not a broad sweeping uh, statement. I think this is just kind of a, a generalization based on areas. The fertilizer choice for someone in the city is most likely a bagged granular fertilizer like trifecta plus, or might be, um, uh, any of your, um, you know, miracle Grow, Espoma. There's a lot of different brands of fertilizers out there that are kind of granular. You can pick them up at you can pick them up at Lowe's and Home Depot. You can pick them up at your local hardware store. You can grab them and apply them to your garden. Small little five, 10 pound bags, and that's great because you don't need that much. Whereas the fertilizer of choice in rural areas is manure, and that's because there's so many uh, places that have cows, sheep, uh, horses. Uh, rabbits, goats, you name it, farm animals, they poop. And poop is a wonderful source of nutrients for the garden. One that you probably would not find very often being applied in a urban garden. Now, yes, you can go out in an urban environment. You can go out, you can find uh, those, those farms out in the country and bring it back to your urban garden. But again, that's an outlier. I think for the most part, most people living in an urban environment we'll choose to go with a granular fertilizer. And that's just because it can be easily transported to an urban center, like a city that can be sold at a big box store. It's close by, it's easy. And I think that's why most people do it. Again, is it bad? No. Is it ineffective? No. They're both very effective and they're both very reliable. It just depends on where you live and what's available to you. And I think that's what's really cool about this is that no matter what, I think you're seeing that like, yes, there are these big differences between urban gardening and, uh, and rural gardening. And I've experienced both of them. My whole life, I've experienced both of them. I've experienced the pros and cons of both, but they're both amazing in their own right. And I think what's really awesome is that we can both relate to the fact that we're in a garden and that's what's so cool about it. So those are all the differences that I can think of between urban gardening and rural gardening. I'm sure there are some things that I forgot. And if you can think of any things that I didn't mention, post them down in the comments box below. I'd love to read them. Also, and the final thing that I wanted to mention is that no matter how you garden or where you garden, the most important thing is that you are gardening. So don't take this video like I'm disenfranchising you if you uh, live in the city or disenfranchising you if you live in the country. Just because I have a background in both types of gardening doesn't mean that one is better than the other. And I wanna drive that point home that no matter what, gardening is what unifies us. Gardening is what brings everyone together regardless of where we live around the entire world. And so I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home, and we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.